As a child, my biggest fear growing up was that I wouldn't remember. That I would somehow forget what it meant to be a child. And that memories would fade away like soapy words on a bathroom mirror. There was wonder and terror there as if I was afraid to grow out of my child's skin or that I never would. My legs were heavy. My little revelations were pinholes of light like stars broken and shaken across an infinite sky. My childhood friend once told me eternity was those long, frantic hours in the middle of the night when you couldn't sleep as a child, but you were awake forever, somehow contained like a small ocean pretending to be a pond. And now I take comfort in what's found at the end of the lane. Even though monsters lurk and grown-ups weep and we all have holes in our hearts, I still know that memories are never lost for good. I saw the world I had walked since my birth, and I understood how fragile it was, that the reality was a thin layer of icing on a great, dark birthday cake, writhing with grubs and nightmares and hunger. And one day, I might wake up from the dark dream and find that I remember everything. Memories will wait at the edges of things. And so I find comfort in thinking of little Letty Hempstock and her smudge of a freckled nose, the way she calls words into being, the language of shaping, those secret ancient words to be whole. I will find myself walking down that lane, rounding the corner of Hempstock Farm, where I'll find Ocean, the black cat, Jenny Hemstock and old Mrs. Hemstock, who hands me a bowl of warm porridge and blackberry jam, and I'll walk out to that little duck pond and slowly begin to remember the ocean that can be found there, which never ends or begins. And until then, I peer into the tiny oceans on my bookshelves, which stretch on forever, but are still small enough to fit inside a bucket. And I'll grow a new heart. Remember, I'll let the small waves take me back.